In the hustle and bustle of life, one often forgets the power of stillness. These words resonate with us as we navigate our chaotic lives. Have we considered the strength within stillness? It's not merely the absence of sound or motion, but a tranquil moment where we feel God's divine presence. It's beautifully captured in Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. A reminder to pause, quiet our worries and surrender to the divine. In stillness we reflect on God's presence. We feel his love, his guidance, his wisdom. We discern his hopeful plans for us. Stillness urges us to disconnect from distractions, to connect with God. In stillness we actively seek him, tuning into his divine frequency, hearing his whispers, feeling his touch. Take a moment to embrace stillness. Let your heart align with his. Let your soul fill with his peace. Let your mind brighten with his wisdom. This is the power of knowing that God is with us always. Remember in the stillness God speaks. God has a plan for each one of us, a plan designed with love and wisdom. This is a statement of faith, an affirmation of trust in an all-knowing, all-loving creator. It's a belief that can bring deep comfort and solace, especially when life storms are raging around us. This idea of divine planning is beautifully encapsulated in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. The verse reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. These words, spoken by God to his people, are a reassurance of his love, his care and his guidance. God's plan, according to this verse, is not one of harm, but of prosperity. It's a plan that gives hope, a plan that promises a future. It's a plan designed by the creator of the universe, the one who knows us more intimately than we know ourselves. He who formed the stars, the galaxies, the vast cosmos has a plan for each one of us. But what does it mean to trust in this plan? It means to have faith, even when the path ahead is unclear. It means to believe in his wisdom, even when we don't understand. It means to rely on his love, even when we feel unlovable. It means to rest in his peace, even when turmoil surrounds us. Trusting in God's plan does not mean we won't face difficulties or hardships. On the contrary, it's often in these challenging times that we grow, that we learn, that we become who we are meant to be. But through it all, we can hold on to this truth. God has a plan for us, a plan to prosper us and not to harm us, a plan to give us hope and a future. So in the stillness, in the silence, let us quiet our hearts and listen. Let us trust in the wisdom of the one who created us, the one who loves us, the one who has a plan for us. Trust in his plan, for it is tailored just for you. Fear and anxiety can cloud our minds, but God offers us peace. This profound truth is not just a comforting sentiment, but a cornerstone of faith that has the power to transform lives. When we're caught in the throes of fear and anxiety, it can often feel like we're adrift in a stormy sea. Our minds swirl with worries and uncertainties, making it difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But there's a beacon of hope that shines through the darkest clouds. And that is the peace of God. The Bible in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 provides us with a blueprint for overcoming fear and anxiety. It reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse presents an equation for peace that begins with prayer. When we bring our fears and anxieties before God in prayer, we're not just talking to the air, we're engaging in a divine conversation, a sacred dialogue, where we are heard, understood and comforted. We're acknowledging our vulnerabilities and laying them bare before the one who can help us overcome them. The second part of this equation is thanksgiving. It's easy to forget to be thankful when we're riddled with worries, but giving thanks, even amidst trials, shifts our focus from our problems to the one who can solve them. It's a potent reminder of God's faithfulness in the past and his promises for the future. Finally, we present our requests to God. This is not a transactional relationship, but a testament of our trust in him. We're entrusting our worries, our fears, our hopes and our dreams into his capable hands, confident that he will do what's best for us. And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. This peace is not a mere absence of conflict but a deep, profound tranquility that stems from knowing that God is in control. In prayer, lay your worries at his feet. This is the key to overcoming fear and anxiety. It's not about denying our fears, 
but about surrendering them to God, who alone can give us peace. Life's trials are not meant to break us, but to build us. These words ring true for each one of us as we journey through life, facing challenges and overcoming obstacles. But did you know that these trials, as tough as they may seem, are actually blessings in disguise? They are meant to strengthen us, to shape us, and to refine us into the best versions of ourselves. In the book of James, the first chapter, verses two through four, there's a beautiful passage that puts this into perspective. It reads, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now let's delve a little deeper into this. It tells us to consider it pure joy when we face trials, not because the trials themselves are enjoyable, but because they lead to something far greater. They lead to perseverance, to maturity, to completeness. They shape us and refine us, giving us the strength and resilience to face whatever comes our way. But how do we find joy in trials? By trusting that they are part of a greater plan. By believing that they are not meant to break us, but to build us. By understanding that they are not meant to make us weak, but to make us strong. By knowing that they are not meant to leave us empty but to fill us with a depth of character and resilience that we never knew we had. So, whenever you find yourself facing a trial, remember this, it's not meant to break you. It's not meant to shatter you. It's meant to make you stronger, to make you wiser, to make you more resilient. It's meant to make you complete. Yes, trials can be tough. Yes, they can be challenging, but they can also be transformative. They can change us, shape us, and mold us into the people we are meant to be. In trials, we find strength. God's love is unfailing, his guidance unerring. A profound truth that echoes through the ages, a beacon of hope for those in the throes of life's many storms. It is the promise of a father to his children, a promise so beautifully encapsulated in Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Can you feel the warmth of that promise? Can you sense the depth of that love? To embrace God's love is to accept a love that is unconditional, a love that is relentless, a love that never fails. It's a love that knows no boundaries, no limitations, and certainly no end. It's a love that is there for you in your moments of joy and there for you in your moments of sorrow. It's a love that can lift you up when you're down and a love that can guide you when you're lost. And it's not just his love that we're called to embrace, but also his guidance. The guidance of a God who sees the bigger picture, who knows the end from the beginning, who has a perfect plan for your life. When we embrace his guidance, we're saying, God, I trust you. I trust that you know what's best for me. I trust that you'll lead me in the right path. Embracing God's love and guidance is not a one-time event, but a lifelong journey. It's a journey that involves daily surrender, daily trust, daily faith. It's a journey that can lead to a life of fulfillment, a life of purpose, a life of joy. So dear friends, as we navigate this journey called life, may we continually seek to embrace God's love and his guidance. May we trust in his unfailing love and his unerring guidance. May we find comfort in his promises and hope in his word. And in the quiet moments when the noise of the world fades away, may we hear his gentle whisper, I love you, I am with you, I will guide you.